Enrique de Malacca, in some sources, he was mentioned as Henry the Black, was originally from Malay archipelago, but was enslaved by a Portuguese explorer, Ferdinand Magellan, during his expedition to Malacca in 1511. Not many sources mention about him, except he was mentioned as Panglima Awang in Malay literature. However, there are no any specific record about him in Malay historical account. The most famous comprehensive record about him was found in Magellan's voyage written by Antonio Pigafetta, an Italian who joined Magellan's crew. According to Pigafetta, Enrique was a Malay originally from Sumatra and lived in Malacca. During the Portuguese invasion of Malacca in 1511, Enrique was one of the defenders of the city. He was captured by the Portuguese and became a slave of a Magellan team. With his good knowledge of navigation and ability to communicate in Malay language, Enrique became a useful person for Magellan as he was in need of an interpreter and a navigator to continue his journey to other parts of Southeast Asia after the capture of Malacca. In 1512, Magellan returned back to Lisbon with his loyal servant, Enrique. Accused by corruption, Magellan later gave his service to the King Charles of Spain from 1517. Magellan offered his help to Spain to discover a new road sailing westward to Spice Island somewhere in Malay archipelago. He succeeded to convince the King Charles by introducing Enrique, who was well versed in local language and environment. This quali quality of Enrique, together with his great experience, were essential to make the next voyage to the Malay world successful. After convincing the king, Magellan was provided with an army and five sailing ships. They left Spain on 20 September 1519 for their expedition. They crossed the Atlantic and then moved to South America and Pacific. And finally, they reached the Marianas Island on 16 March 1521. This journey continued for almost eight months and gave the terrible experience to Magellan's crew. They were facing many hardships like starvation, diseases, and mutinies. As soon as they arrived at island, they got food, supply, and other necessary equipment and turned to southward. On 17 March, they reached a place what is known today as Philippines. During this time, Enrique played an instrumental role as interpreter. He became the voice and ear between Magellan and the native. On 7 April, the expedition had reached a place known as Cebu. Magellan met Raja Humabon the rules of Cebu. Raja asked Magellan to defeat a rebellious group led by a warrior, Lapu Lapu. Magellan agreed and launched an attack on Lapu Lapu force but was killed on 27 April. After the death of Magellan, Enrico went into deep mourning. According to Pigafetta, Although Enrique was a slave of Magellan, they had a good friendship. Gaffeta wrote that he no longer went to ashore 
to do necessary business but always wrapping in a blanket. A new leader of the exploration, Duarte Barbosa, want to keep Enrique as a translator and decide that Enrique should be a slave of the ship. This decision made Enrique unhappy. He plotted a conspiracy with a Raja Humabon against the Spaniards, Barbosa and his shipmate. On the next day, Enrique told the Spaniard that Raja Humabon prepared jewels and prison for the king of Spain and asked them to receive the prison. A group of the Spaniards led by Barbosa went to receive the prison but they were attacked by the Humabon's army. Enrique managed to escape from the attack. After the war, the name of Enrique disappeared into the mist of history. Some historians claim that he returned back to his homeland in Sumatra or found his way back to Malacca. Some of them said that he remained in Cebu. If he made his way home, indeed, he was the first man who circumnavigated around the globe rather than Ferdinand Magellan or Juan Sebastian del Cano. Although there are many controversies and arguments about him, he was concluded that he did a great achievement in history. He has sailed the sea of the East Indies with Magellan, followed his across Indian Ocean and African continent, continue until Atlantic, South Africa and Pacific. He fought bravely, explored the new world, experienced the new life and culture and he indeed embarked the greatest adventure that no man had done before.